At about 11.30 Eastern time today, Saturday, October 3rd, President Trump's personal physician, Dr. Sean Conley, as well as the rest of his medical team at Walter Reed Medical Center, they gave a press conference. Now, there's a delicate balance between maintaining patient confidentiality versus what the public is entitled to know when it comes to being the president of the United States of America. And the line between these two is blurry. And what should be kept private and what should be disclosed to the public is somewhat up for debate. As the president, FDR, once said, when it comes to the president's health, you have to be transparent with the public as they can take it on the chin. So we need to know how sick our president is. In this press conference, Dr. Conley walks out to the podium with the rest of the medical team, which included three pulmonary and critical care doctors, two infectious disease doctors and anesthesiologists, in addition to a pharmacist and nurses. And here are my five biggest takeaways from President Trump's COVID-19 diagnosis and his hospitalization. For one, we did get some important information, but Dr. Sean Conley seemed to be evasive when asked questions by reporters. It's pretty obvious to me that he's cherry picking medical details. He seemed evasive, like when President, when asked if President Trump was on supplemental oxygen, he said he's not on oxygen right now. He also said that his oxygen saturation at that time, or as of this morning, was 96% while off of oxygen. He also described his vital signs today as heart rate in the 60s to 70s with systolic blood pressure 110 to 120, which he says that's where it's always been. It hasn't budged, he said. And there was also a report that came from the White House that was released right after Dr. Conley's press conference, which said the president's vitals over the past 24 hours were very concerning and the next 48 hours will be critical in terms of his care. We're still not on a clear path to a full recovery. That's what a White House official who was anonymous told a pool reporter, and that's how that got relayed to the media. So which are we to believe here? Are we to believe the pool reporter's report that came from the White House? Or are we to believe, and this is about the same time, within an hour of each other, or are we to believe Dr. Conley and the medical team? So Dr. Conley, who is saying all is well and vital signs are just fine, which, by the way, those numbers that he gave, if those are in fact the real numbers, those are stable vital signs. But if we believe the statement that was put out by the White House, that totally contradicts Dr. Conley's update. So this needs to be clarified by Dr. Conley. What we do know is that he was able to walk to and from the helicopter yesterday without supplemental oxygen. That's because we actually could see that. And I could see that he's not in respiratory distress when he was doing that. That in itself tells me, as a lung doctor, that his oxygen status is stable, especially when you see that he was not showing signs of respiratory distress. With him having a 96% oxygen saturation while breathing room air today, in conjunction with him having a cough, that tells me he likely has some degree of viral pneumonia, and it's probably mild. So from a medical standpoint, when it comes to the oxygenation, that is reassuring. Right now, I'm breathing room air, which is 21% oxygen, and I'm not in respiratory distress. I'm not breathing fast. I'm not using any accessory muscles of breathing. Now, what's the complete opposite end of that spectrum? The complete opposite end would be someone who's on a mechanical ventilator with a breathing tube getting 100% oxygen. That's the most you can get. So we have room air, uh, not in respiratory distress, versus someone who has a breathing tube getting 100% oxygen and everything else is in between. So Trump is definitely closer to this end of the spectrum than here. So overall, he's requiring very minimal, if any, supplemental oxygen as of right now. With that said, it would be still nice to know how much lung inflammation you see on his chest x-ray, or lung ultrasound, or on a CAT scan of the lungs. The other thing is when someone has COVID-19, another concern is that someone might have blood clots in the lungs and that would require a CTA of the lungs, meaning a CT angiogram of the lungs. So did he have this done? We don't know. Dr. Conley provided little information and did not answer all the questions that were asked. He even walked away and didn't answer a question when a reporter asked if he was getting steroids. He also refused to say how high his fever was or when the last time Trump tested negative. Also, what blood work did they do? They said that his kidney function was normal and his liver function was normal. So that tells me that his CMP, his complete metabolic panel, at least when it comes to the liver and the kidneys, 
were fine. They also said his cardiac workup was fine. So presumably that means he had a negative troponin level in his blood work. And he also had a normal EKG. And I imagine they also did an echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound of the heart. Presumably they did that. And presumably it was normal if they are to be believed that his cardiac workup was normal. But getting back to the blood work, something else I'd wanna know is how high was his D-dimer? How high was his ferritin? His CBC, the complete blood count, did that show low lymphocytes, which would be an indicator of worse prognosis with COVID? Did he have low albumin levels, which also would indicate a worse prognosis? We know that Dr. Conley is only saying things that Trump will allow him to say. So credibility is zero in my eyes. This is all the more reason we need to have objective findings presented to the public and proof of vital signs. Otherwise, America in the world won't know what is going on with our president. Okay, the second thing, this might seem trivial, but it's not. Dr. Conley described President Trump as slightly overweight, but it's more like slightly obese. There's a difference. Trump's height is six foot three, his weight 243 pounds, and when you use a BMI calculator, his body mass index comes out to 30.4, which is classified as obese. So uh, overweight BMI would be anywhere from 25 to 29.9, and then obesity is a BMI of 30 or higher. This is important because we know that obese patients have a worse prognosis with COVID-19. It's also important because it's more evidence that he's making things look rosier than they really are. And when that happens, you lose credibility. Another thing that Dr. Conley said is that day seven to 10 of COVID-19 illness is when the inflammatory phase occurs. And therefore they're gonna monitor him closely at that time whether that's in the hospital or back in the White House, that remains to, to be determined based on how he's doing. There are lots of COVID cases, and this is something I see in my experience as a pulmonary and critical care doctor, is that lots of times COVID-19 starts out slow and seemingly innocuous, and then things can quickly go south. Now at this seven to 10 day mark, if the cytokine storm is going to develop, meaning lots of inflammation in the lungs and systemic inflammation, it's gonna be around, typically it's around this point. At this point, there is no doctor in the world who knows how this is gonna play out with Trump. Trump can get better, he could get worse, it could happen slowly, it could happen quickly. I've had patients who are months out recovering from COVID-19. I had a patient who had symptoms with COVID, they got better and were discharged from the hospital. They later came back to the hospital and ended up dying. There's no way of predicting this illness, it's just unpredictable. The other thing is that President Trump received an experimental therapy called REGN-CoV-2. So this is made by a biotech company called Regeneron. It's essentially two different monoclonal antibodies that are combined into a cocktail. And Regeneron scientists selected two antibodies that best neutralized a version of the novel coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, in the laboratory. They then cloned these antibodies and put them into a cocktail therapy. Regeneron announced results from the first 275 non-hospitalized patients in a late stage trial that showed that treatment was safe and seemed to reduce viral levels and improve symptoms in patients with COVID-19. The greatest improvements were seen in those who hadn't already mounted a detectable immune response to this new coronavirus. The patients in the trial were on average age 44 years old and almost half of the patients in the trial were obese. About two thirds of them had one or more underlying risk factors for severe COVID. So there will be more data to come from this trial and from a trial involving hospitalized patients and one that is testing the antibody cocktail as prevention for people who have contact with someone in their household who has COVID-19. As of right now, there are no published studies of this therapy, of this cocktail therapy. Dr. Conley also declined to say when Trump had his last negative COVID-19 test, which has important implications for contact tracing. The incubation time for this virus on average is anywhere from four to seven days. It can be up to 14 days. Technically it can actually be longer than that, but the vast majority of people will develop symptoms from the time that they first contracted the virus within 14 days, but on average, it's around four to seven days. That means most likely he first contracted the virus about four to seven days before he first had symptoms. So he had symptoms on Thursday, so that was two days ago. So subtract four to seven days. 
Also, you look at the contact tracing for him and the Rose Garden event where there's lots of people. And it's probably somewhere around then, if not that exact event where he contracted the virus. But a more precise answer would come by knowing his last known negative test and then when he tested positive. And this is absolutely something that needs to be disclosed. You have to remember that when someone contracts the virus, let's say right now there's someone right in front of me who has the virus, I don't have the virus, and it gets transmitted to me. Right away, that virus is going to start to replicate once it's inside my body. But then it's going to take time for me to test positive if I were giving a test. It's not going to test positive right now. It's not going to test positive in a couple hours. It's most likely a day or two, but we don't know exactly when that is for sure. It depends on different factors and it's going to be variable for different people. But this is why people who have been exposed to someone with COVID-19, this is why they have to be quarantined for 14 days. So everyone who was exposed to Trump since he first contracted the virus needs to be in quarantine. Which, by the way, isolation is almost the same as quarantine, except that isolation is when someone is known to have COVID-19. A question that often comes up is what defines exposure, and that is somewhat of a gray area. It's loosely defined as being within six feet of someone with COVID-19 who is not wearing a mask for more than 15 minutes. What I'm most curious about right now is the diagnostic testing. What did his chest x-ray show? Did he have a CAT scan? Was it a regular CAT scan or was it a CTA CAT scan of the lungs looking for pulmonary embolism, meaning blood clot? When Dr. Conley mentioned ultrasound, I wouldn't be surprised if he did an ultrasound of the lungs because you can get similar information as you would a chest x-ray and a CAT scan of the lungs when it comes to looking for the degree of inflammation within the lungs. So that's something I'm curious about. In addition to some of the blood work that they didn't talk about, such as his albumin levels, and his lymphocyte counts. These have very important implications in terms of prognosis for COVID-19. And then again, someone who has COVID-19 to the point of requiring hospitalization, that oxygen status can change very quickly, can change within minutes to hours. And there can be a progressive decline, and that's something that they're watching very closely. And if that declines over a short amount of time, things can go south real quick to the point of sometimes requiring intubation with a ventilator. So this is something that they're gonna to continue to watch closely. And this is something that I'm going to continue to monitor very closely and make another video about. So make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification if you haven't done so already. And until then, I'll see you in the next one.